1969 Dukes of Hazzard Dodge Charger by AMT Ertl, coming up next. Hello once again model car fans and welcome back to another great unboxing video right down here at the Monster Hobbies YouTube channel. And today we are going to be looking at the 1969 Dodge Charger Dukes of Hazzard Edition. This one is really special because it was actually autographed by Ben Jones himself, Cooter, when we saw him at one of the World of Wheels shows back in the past. So what I'm going to do is, before we begin unboxing this and taking a look, this kit has been issued many times by uh, AMT Ertl and MPC and everybody. So anyway, I'm going to show you some pictures of those old box arts just for the fun of it, just so that you know there's other versions of this kit out there. And actually, Round 2 made a corrected version of this kit with a tunneled rear window. This is the, the kit that came out prior to that. So that's kind of cool. Something to see of, you know, how it was and what it is in the future. So anyway, without further ado, let's check out those pictures and then get right into our review. Now them good old boys, they never meant any harm. Here we got our 1969 Dodge Charger Dukes of Hazard Edition. And this one is especially signed, Hey Y'all from Cooter, who was Ben Jones. So this is a cool kit. I actually, we went to a World of Wheels back in uh, mid 2000s. And he was there, and I got him to sign this, and I also got his autographed picture hanging upstairs, which maybe we'll take a look at a bit later. Anyway, this kit, of course, originally was an MPC kit way back in the day. It got turned into the Duke's car, and then AMT got it, and then AMT put their logo on it. But this is basically that old box art. This one came from 1997. And it's been released so many times, it isn't even funny. I mean, just type in Dukes of Hazzard General Lee model kit. And you'll see there was like the ghost of the General Lee and all this stuff came all, all about. And uh, anyway, I got this one and it's autographed. So just turning up, of course, we get to see clips from the movie. There's, of course, Bo and Luke Duke, the, the car itself. Now, this is an earlier box because the controversy, of course, over the flag... Here's a picture of one of the Dukes of Hazard box arts without the Confederate flag on top of the car. And, um, <laughs> yeah, we won't get into that. The most recent edition of this car, as you saw in, of course, the box art tops, now has the regular American, let's just call it the Northern flag. Southern flag is gone. And... It actually got removed on some of the box tops, which is interesting. So I got one of those oldies. Anyway, we get into all the cool things. Complete interior, plated parts, interior roll cage, vinyl tires, push bar, custom mag wheels, colorful decals. Now, one thing about this kit is it has the incorrect rear window. It actually had the tunneled window like last week's review of the 69 Dodge Charger. Just imagine that sort of correct body of course, without the vinyl top. So later on, AMT and around two, they corrected this flaw in the kit. But this one, of course, is before that time. This one shares the rear window with the Daytona 500, the, you know, Dodge version of the Superbird with the big wing on the back. Okay, tilting it up here, of course, we see the barcode on the end. So that means it's, of course, a kit from the 90s because the original one did not have a barcode. Parts falling. Okay, now they relaxed. For the modeler of moderate experience, wait till you see this thing and you tell me <laughs> somebody of moderate experience can <laughs> get this together. Anyway, all right, so the generally Dodge Charger photo of car illustrates actual size of model. So from here to here, hey, I'm going to check that out. Okay, uh, made in Mexico, 
So you know this is kind of a oldie since everything now seems to be made in China. Okay, so there we go. Now let's check this out. Of course, there's some more. The famous jump scene. Yeehaw! As General Lee goes flying out over whatever it's going to jump over. So let's rip the lid off this thing. <laughs> Remember that video? Okay, what do we got under the hood, or under the lid? We have the Dukes of Hazard instructions with this nice line drawing of the General Lee. We have our highly controversial decal sheet going on here. I have nothing against this flag, really. But anyway, I'm Canadian. <laughs> Don't hate me. Okay, so there we have our interior tub. Of course, going back to the 70s. There's our body shell with that incorrect window. Roof line. That was complained about for decades, I'll tell you. Okay, and then there's the bits and pieces. Actually, I do believe this kit was originally made in 1980, if I remember right. There's our chrome. Got to come out of that bag for the review. Here's our front end, and notice it's got the K-member and the torsion bars molded in place. And then you've got your rear axle with the different heights. And, gosh, a lot of thick plastic and a lot of flash. And it's orange. Yeehaw! <laughs> anyway, there's our rear axle as one big piece. Pretty interesting. It's got the NASCAR-style roll cage in there. And then we have our 426 Hemi, I believe, so what's in this kit. Good old subscribe to the blue printer. I have some of these somewhere. This is our NASCAR style fuel cell. There's the Hemi heads and our wheels. Glass, very simplistic. Tires. And the front push bar and radiator. The hood. It's got a little cutout too, because remember the, um, the box tops, there's different variations before this became the Duke's car. There's a tail lamp. I've got one. Where's the other? Anyway, <laughs> that's no fun. Oh, go out of focus. So that's basically it for that component. So I'll just clear all this out of the way, and when I return, we'll take a look at those instructions. And here we have our instruction sheet which of course is trademarked and copyrighted in 1997 by Warner Brothers Entertainment, of course, and licensed out to the Ertl Company. Ah, I actually have two instruction sheets and I just realized that this one is the French one, because in Canada you got English and French. There we go. Used under license to the Ertl Company. Dodge Charger used under license from Chrysler Corporation. Okay, so I will... Say au revoir to our French instructions. <laughs> yeah, I should get my daughters to review this. They're learning French. Step one, read this before you begin. Let's just make sure. Yep, there we go. En français. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So yeah, make sure you test fit the parts and all the rest of this stuff. One day I'll just make a video of me reading these. And then anybody that doesn't do that afterwards, I don't know what I can do. <laughs> okay, anyway, so this is a sort of a slide and zoom type instruction deal. So let's just get up there. Okay, so here we have the um, Hemi motor going together. Right and left engine halves, there's our transmission, cylinder heads that you get two, intake manifold, front of cover with our oil filter sticking out. And then we'll just slide this up a little here. There's our three-piece fan, pulleys, and the alternator. No alternator bracket, though. Then we have our air cleaner, painted gloss black, the distributor, which pops onto the side here, the dual carburetors, and our good Hemi valve covers. And then a right and left hand side exhaust manifold, oil pan, and there's that front fan going on there. Panel 3 shows our wheels going together, and these are, of course, the vector style wheels. And then they go into our Goodyear tires. Now on the front you have this big pin that goes right through that front wheel. And then on the back you've got just a regular wheel back for a metal axle. 
Panel 4, Part A, is our interior assembly, and they say paint the interior tan overall. Carpeting should be flat, and vinyl areas such as seats, armrests, and instrument panels should be semi-gloss. Steering wheels should be gloss. So the whole thing is tan, but of course they're making this look like leather by using the semi-gloss, and then sort of plastic, I guess, by using the high gloss. It says all gauge faces flat black needles and characters are white now there's a center console going in here and then our interior pan which of course is tub style so you're not going to get the high detail like you do on the Ravel kit panel B shows the roll cage components it's got your left and right hand side here with the rear support bar going across and the top bar here this, of course, is all padded so that the Duke boys don't bump their heads. Now, panel four, of course, is our roll cage going in. Now, I remember one of the Dukes of Hazard episodes. I think they were picking up their aunt or something. And they were br bringing her home in the General Lee. And they told her to climb through the side windows because, of course, the Duke's car is sort of a rescued NASCAR. That's why you got the roll cage and all that. And in NASCAR, they welded the doors shut to make them lightweight. So you had to go sliding in through the windows. Now panel 5 shows our chassis assembly going together. The front wheels pop in here, and the rear wheels go right through this axle, and then you can glue on the entire differential and exhaust pipe and drive shaft assembly. Of course they say paint these different colors, but basically this is very simplistic. Here we have the continuation of the chassis assembly. We have our Hemi dropping in. The radiator and the battery pops all in the side. Panel 6 is showing our body assembly with the grill and the grill inserts popping in there. The front bumper overrider, which is black, goes in there uh, underneath. Then all this goes into the front and our front and rear windows pop in and the gas cap goes up in the back. Step C shows the rear bumper and the taillights being popped in here. And of course I'm missing one. And our license plate holder going in into these two little tangs here. And panel 7 is showing our final assembly. Here's our hood, do not smit, going on to the body. And then we've got the firewall going to the front of this interior tub. And everything all drops down together. And finally we wrap up our Dukes of Hazzard General Lee model kit with our decal application. And here we put on the flag on the top, the General Lee names up there as well, and then the famous number one decal going on the doors. And that completes our look at the General Lee Dukes of Hazard model kit instructions. It looks like the old Duke boys got themselves in trouble again. Actually, they're not really in trouble, but here's our Dukes of Hazard body, and I got our hood here which as you can see will fit into those two little pins and it's supported up in the front with the grill once that happens. Now let's just take our hood out of the way for now. Now even though this is a Charger 500 roof or a Daytona 500 roof, uh, it's still not that bad. It's not the correct Duke's roof, which of course round two has actually taken a lot of time to redevelop this body. But this is sort of the before version. It's got the little vents in the door here, or the impression of vents in the door. There was a lot of flash on this kit. I have cleaned it up. And if you that are familiar with the original MPC kit know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Front looks not too bad. I mean, overall it's, it's okay, it's just not correct. You know, I got the front pan here with a little grill and the windshield wipers. And got nice charger logos in the sail panels. But basically, this is how the original General Lee kit looked from MPC. Next up, we have three parts, trees, and components. Actually, two trees, one component. This, of course, is our interior tub. Comes with the seats molded in place, the package shelf across the back, door panels, and center console. The front buckets are separate, as they are here. But they are molded as one piece with seat belts. There's a firewall. Here's our entire rear axle spring and exhaust pipe assembly with the drive shaft. There's our 69 Charger dashboard and the steering wheel with the soft button in the 
in there. This little square panel is the top of part of the console, I do believe. And these are the little inserts for the grill. So, I mean, taking it for what it is, let's just take a look at the interior tub here. It's kind of hard to focus on this orange. <laughs> but as you can see, you do get some panels in here. Um, there are some major sink or mold marks in here, high raised. So that's a bit of time with that old number 16 hobby blade, scraping that down nice and flat. Underneath, no mold marks, of course. <laughs> you know, you think they'd engineer the mold marks on the bottom of this. But anyway, that is the tubs. This is how we had it back in the day. I'd really like to see a new round two kit, but I don't need that many Dukes kits, you know. Okay, there's our bucket seats, and as you can see, they do have the seat belts molded in. They are one solid seat, which is kind of nice. Then there's your dash or your firewall, pardon me, and then you can see the sprue goes right into that exhaust. Um, what do you call it? <laughs> Muffler. <laughs> okay, so it goes directly into there which is going to be quite a bit of a pain to cut away, but you can do it. I've got confidence in you guys. Okay, and then here we have our dashboard, the little instruments and whatnot. You can paint this up to look quite nice if you take the time. Our steering wheel, three-spoke rally wheel, and of course those vents. So, you know, for what it is, it was a good attempt back in 1980 for this model kit, actually even before that. Um, yeah, I do believe 1968, if I remember right. But anyway, this is how it is. So here we have three more orange part trees. This, of course, is the NASCAR roll cage, and there's the cross brace for it. Here's all our engine parts for the 426 Hemi, including two intake manifolds, so I'm not quite sure what was happening there. Um, there's the Hemi. Here's our firewall with the brace and the front little bumperette thing. Overrider, whatever. There's our battery and our uh, belts and pulleys, the air cleaner, and all the other good components. Again, a fairly simplistic kit. However, this Dodge Charger was actually the basis for a lot of the AMT kits, as we'll see in upcoming reviews here on this channel. Stay tuned. There are some mold pins on the back that got to get removed. Again, I mean, it's okay. You got to consider the vintage. This thing is, of course, very old. And here's our final orange components, again doubling up. I have our chassis pan here, as well as this piece, which has our distributor and our cylinder heads for the Hemi. There's part of the console there. Our fuel cell for the NASCAR style, which go over top of the regular fuel tank here. And then there's our wheels. There's the fronts with the pins go through and the backs. Okay, so I'm going to just move this one out of the way because there's not much detail going on there. But, you know, for what this is, the chassis pan with those got to get sawed off for sure. For what this is, it isn't that bad of a simple undercarriage for these Dodges. You know, there you've got your subframes here, and again, the torsion bars are molded in place. All you got to do is scrape the seam lines. I do believe this was a promo kind of thing at one point, but I'm not 100% sure on that. It does look very promo-ish with these big, like, hole things. You, you can imagine holes drilled through them, then screws going up in there. And again, there's some traces of that in the front end. Inner fender aprons have soft detail. The battery will glue onto these little Peggy things that are there. Peggy! There's some mold things there, but that might actually be... You know, you might need those there to, to have the floor pan sit in the right position. But again, there's some bleed-through orange plastic. So now we get into my favorite component of all the model kits, which of course is the chrome! So here we have our chrome rear bumper. There's a little gas cap. This, of course, is our grill. And those inserts would plug right over top of here and here. There's the typical Dukes of Hazard wheels, which were not 
uh, factory stock. I do believe they're more of, you know, late 70s, early 80s style wheel. Then we've got our cylinder head covers for the Hemi, with, of course, these four holes are where the spark plugs would go. Then we've got our alternator, the two carburetors, the gear shift level, uh, lever, pardon me, the tack on where, and a little license plate that has charger written on there. So you can always paint that up and wipe the top off and have it say charger. So there's our front bumper. You can see the chrome is pretty nice on it, actually. There's those wheels. And then the rest. Turning over, of course, sink marks on the back, just like the other Dodge from Ravel. And sand that down and paint them black and then insert it in the car and it'll all just disappear. So again, this I think is the better part of the entire model. Next up we have our glass components, which are very basic. Two taillights, and I'm missing one. The rear window, and of course our front windshield. There's a lot of flash on this, of course, for the vintage. You gotta keep in mind at this stage, this model kit had been punched through so many times, because of course the Dukes of Hazzard General Lee is quite a popular kit. And yeah, this type of stuff happens. So I mean, look at how much flash is around that window there, the side window. We got a bit of a scratch in the glass because this was never bagged. And then our red taillight does have some nice detail on there, but I'm missing one, of course. Anyway, so that's our glass components. Here we have some Goodyear Custom Wide Tread Polyglass Tires. And these, of course, are the same tires that are in the 1968 AMT El Camino kit. However, these came before the El Camino kit by decades. So, just so you know some of the history of the AMT tires that they chose, one thing I was looking up with the Polyglass GT tires from Goodyear, is I discovered that these came out in 1967, and prior to that, the tires were bias ply. These ones are bias belted. So, if you know your tire technology, it's how the um, inner cords of the tires go together underneath our rubber treads, which help them grip the road. So polyglass tires were quite a new thing. What they used is polyglass or um, essentially fiberglass threads inside the tires. Now with a bias belted tire, they come in at an angle underneath the rubber and just like how my fingers are here. Oops, let's just, there we go. So just like my fingers are here, they're at this 45 degree angle and they wrap around the tire going, you know, this way, crossing over and wrapping around. So those were polyglass um, fiberglass fibers that were in there. So they helped improve the stopping power of these tires immensely. Now here you can see the nice trade on here. Now with a radial tire, You've got the same kind of weave, except instead of being a 45 degree angle, they're a 90 degree angle crossing over your tires. So for you guys that don't know anything about the polyglass bias belted tires, the radials came after and were of great improvement in stopping. So Goodyear stopped making the polyglass tires in about 1970-ish. Here we have our decal sheet for the General Lee. Of course, we've got our number ones for the door panels, the General Lee name, and the flag of the Confederate States. Now, there's something not quite right about this decal. See if you guys can figure it out. Okay, did you notice? It's short one star in this field. So here I have an original MPC Dukes of Hazzard kit. And there is the corrected original flag of the Confederate States with all 13 stars going on that blue field. And that completes our look at the 1969 Dukes of Hazard Dodge Charger by MPC. Tune in next week to watch the adventures of Bo and Luke Duke. Well, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing of the 1969 Dukes of Hazard General Lee Dodge Charger. All right, wasn't that cool? Yeah. 
Okay, so if you like these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to know about it. And this one's not for sale, but if you want to uh, see what we do have, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, Dukes fans, yeah!